I'm Captain Mihir Bhagwati, the President and the Deputy CFI, Bombay Flying Club. Uh, today I'll show you how to do the pre-flight inspection for the Cessna 172 and hear how it goes basically. So basically we need to keep make sure before starting the airplane that we sign the ortho book. We got all the documents and everything in place like our JLB and everything what we have. The flight bag which has all the documents, make sure you carry them at all times. And here we go with the checklist. So, we first go to the pito, we start from the right wing, basically we start from here. So we make sure and remove the pito cover, which is this. Make sure the pito is clean and has no nothing on it. And uh, make sure it's uh, the hole here and the hole here are clean. There should not be anything blocking this thing. So after this, uh, doing doing this thing, we go in the airplane, put the pito cover and put it at the back of the airplane here, where we have our um, cup for draining the fuel and our lipstick which is right here. Uh, also we make sure that the flight's weight and balance uh, documents are in there and the papers are in there, okay? So before that we make sure the parking brake of the airplane is set which is right here. So set the parking brake by pulling it. Alright, uh, control wheel lock is removed. So this is the control wheel lock and make sure the controls are free and correct and the control wheel is removed, okay? The, make sure positively the ignition switch is off which is right here. You don't want any uh, prop to be live and uh, you don't want anyone to um, play with that, yeah? So make sure the control is on. Then make sure the Avionics master switch is off, which is right here, okay? And your master switch is on, okay? After you check the master switch and you check the fuel quantity. So fuel quantity is checked visually, so we know exactly how much fuel we have here. And same goes on with the low fuel annunciators, which is right here. So it's not showing low fuel annunciators. This will come on because the engine is off. It's not currently full, uh, it's on, okay? We make sure the fly fire extinguisher is there in the airplane, which is right here, okay? And it's fully charged. So the flight, flight fire extinguisher is there, it's fully charged. I can hear the radio, the fan, the VRX cooling fan going on, which is there. And check the operation for its normalcy by putting on the Avionics Master, okay? So here it goes, and here it goes off, okay? Make the static pressure sure is there. Your lights are off, check the static pressure and check the alternator, uh, the uh, altitude, uh, altitude over here. It should move and fluctuate. Both your pressure uh, instruments, your uh, vertical speed and your altimeter should show correction the reading with the, uh, with the uh, alternate starting going on, on and off. Okay, here we don't have an autopilot, but in other planes where we have autopilot, make sure the autopilot is turned off and it's not uh, switched on, okay? So that's what we do. Uh, static pressure and alternate stored pressure is off. We check that, check the position of all annunciators and make sure everything is okay in the cockpit. So from here, we will extend the flaps by putting them down. So they come all the way down. Here the flaps coming up uh, and uh, coming down, sorry. And we make sure it's off. After that, we set the for takeoff and we put it off, yeah? So this is done with the checklist of the cockpit. Now I'll come out with my draining thing and uh, we'll start. Uh, with the right wing, okay. So we make sure, uh, make sure there is nothing. The, the pedo static is, uh, is open. This is your uh, stall warning indicator, and you should never blow in in this thing to make sure uh, the stall warning is working. In fact, if I was a little taller, if I had a stool, I could go up and suck air from this, and it would give me a warning which will work. This is not an electrical one, so it did not be checked every time. Okay, make sure the tie down is removed. You come here, make sure the leading end is not damaged all the way here. So all strike me, make sure the lights are intact, lights are in place. Now make sure your ailerons are free to move. Now what you check in the aileron here is two things, okay? I personally check the wicks which are here, right here, they are in place. Apart from that, there is a connecting rod over here which connects the aileron to the aircraft. So you have to make sure it's in place, it's not loose or it's not come off. And every hinge, so there are three hinges over here. One here, one here, and one here. So make all these three hinges are in place and it's got a, it's got a wire which is locking the hinge. Make sure the wire is, is in. If the hinge is alright but the wire is out, this is no good, okay? And make sure the free movement of the aileron. Okay, I come back here to the flap section. The flaps are fully down now, fully lowered. Make sure one bolt here, one linkage here and one linkage here in place. Just move it a little bit and see that's firm and doesn't go anywhere, okay? Now coming to the baggage door. So I make sure the baggage door is locked. 
Keep it pressed, make sure it's locked. Okay, from here you can see your baggage. Make sure it's not overloaded, everything is in place. So do that, then you move along the lines over here. And look at your leading edge of your elevator. I mean, it does have stone marks and everything because it's a plane used every day, it's a working plane. So make sure it's okay. After that, you can come in here and check your elevator manually. Now, what, what do I check in the elevator personally is the connections here. So there's one, one bolt here, one here, and one which is here, right here. Okay, so I check this bolt and there's a ball joint which is here. The ball and the socket joint which connects. Can you see it move now? And there's a pin over here, quarter pin in this. So these three things you check here. So one is on top, one is on bottom. So, so okay, so they look good, they are in place. And come here and check your rudder. After you check your rudder, make sure there's one here and one here. The one above is too up to see. So make sure it's engaged, it's free to move and it's good in place okay so again check your antennas your beacon and your light here it's intact now we can come this side of the airplane and check these plates are in place because they come out very easily they are on three screws and check the one on this side now this side has got an additional bit your trimmer make sure that the trimmer is working if your trimmer is connected and you put your elevator up and down it will automatically move so you know this is connected if this wasn't to be connected it would now move okay so you move this you don't need to touch it or press, press it or uh, move this from here because it will get disengaged or it will get uh, uh, unrigged basically so we make sure this is in place again make sure your wicks are in place your elevator is in place again your elevator leading edge here no bird hits or anything Stone chips and everything okay so again is a working airplane flies eight hours a day so everything looks good uh, this is a very important part make sure your elt battery is due so in case uh, if you go down somewhere people need to find you so there's a battery over here with an emergency transmitter located in here which works on the 406 frequency make sure it's so this is valid until 2021 february so which is good 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 to go make sure the antenna is in its place not, not moving from back here what i check is the upper wing and the antenna is over here with the GPS antenna right there. Okay, so now I come here and I check the flap again. Okay, so this goes again here. Check make the flap is in good place. Again, this aileron goes here. Make sure, okay, this is in, this is in, and this is all the three hinges are in. And also check your control of the, uh, of the aileron over here. So aileron is in place, does not move. Come back here again. Check your lights, check your nav lights, everything looks good. Check your mooring, okay, it's in place. Now, this is very important. So this is your tire of the airplane, which has got crab marks over here. So this crab mark is aligned with this crab mark, this crab mark is aligned with this crab mark. So if anybody before you done a high wing landing or a hard landing or has done any damage to the airplane, this crab mark will move it. Instead of here, it would be here or somewhere. So make sure it's this. Then you come on the back side of the wheel. So. On the back side of the wheel, you have your disc brake and the hydraulic assembly over here. So this is the main pipe which comes in and feeds in power to the brake. If this is leaking, I put my hand here to the lowest part and see. If there is any drop of oil, hydraulic oil leaking from here, I wouldn't fly. That means you got a leaky brake and it would fail any time. So make sure this is clean. This is your disc. Okay, so this is not worn out. I can see the brake pads right from here. So this looks good, okay? And I can see my landing gear's position. It's not damaged anyways. Okay, so we come here. Now I come again to the strut. Now this is a very important part. Make sure this is in, this pin is in place. Now this pin is supposed to be pulled to remove the door of the airplane. If this locking wire is broken, I would ask the maintenance guys to fix the locking wire because if I pull this out, the door would fall off in flight. Okay, and this is only to be used for emergency. So, so, so you can actually, you know, pull the pin off and the door comes off. But I wouldn't fly without the pin. Now I'll break this for you and show you. So this is now broken. So would you fly now? You wouldn't fly now. You want this to be fixed. This is the blocking wire. Because if I pull this out, the lower hinge comes out and the door comes out from here. Okay. So this is the thing. Now coming to the front leading edge, I check the vents. One, two, both the vents in place. Okay. Now uh, I'll go up to the airplane and check the fuel. Before that, I would check the oil. I'll show you to walk around and this is how I do it. The checklist says a different thing. So now this requires W100 or 100W oil, which is used over here. I'll pull up, I'll check the dipstick. 
and uh, make sure the oil is in place so right now we have seven and a half quads of oil so eight is the maximum what you can carry and seven and a half is good if you have eight quads usually it throws it away so make sure this is closed don't leave this open you'll have oil all over your engine so you close the, the, the lid make sure it's locked at all times make sure your quad fouling is in place no loose bolts or nothing like that your exhaust is in good shape now I come to the front of the engine so now this has to be open this is the main intake of air and this is your induction uh, filter so this is a little dusty but it cannot be blocked if this is blocked you your engine would not perform and here you have the alternator and this is the belt for the alternator you make sure the alternator belt is in place and it's not loose if it's too loose your you lose your charge and your battery would not charge and eventually you have a battery uh, the failure now coming to the propeller now I check the health of the engine in a good way so basically what I do Sorry. is yeah I'm fine so I usually check the engine and the play in the engine so this is the play in the engine so if this is there then the engine is okay if this does not move that means your engine is jammed the crankcase and the bearing of the engine is jammed so that will move so you come here and check your shimmy now so now this is supposed to be at least six inches out so this is about four inches and two inches so this is okay in good position and this is where you see the dirt mark over here this this much it goes inside when the aircraft uh, is loaded or when power is added make sure there's no oil leaking from here anywhere and everything is in a good bit make sure your locking wires and the quarter pin here and here is in place and you're good to go from this side now so now after doing this what I would do is I would check the fuel go up and check the fuel so good to go this has got 70 liters in here and this side again After this, we drain the fuel. So, the draining points are right here. Okay, so I'll show you how we drain the fuel over here. So, the, this is what you drain. So, one. Then, this one's the second one over here. Two. Third one's right here. And fourth one's right here okay now this is how we drain this side we train the fuel this side once we find the fuel is okay we'll give this as a sample for the engineering to make sure it works so this is how we go so one again here one again here so one again here and one again here okay so this is good we got a bottle of sample of fuel now this we'll preserve it and give to the engineering to make sure the fuel is good for the flight now same thing goes here please check there's no leakage of oil the pads looking good and everything been good so this is how we do it so so this is how we check this side of the thing so now we're done with the flight let's go flying yeah